Okay, welcome back everyone. And today we're going to get into our lecture on mollusks and annelids. So first let's talk about mollusks. Phylum mollusca is a really diverse group of individuals. Um, 85,000 different species, uh, mostly marine species. That means they live in salt water. 23% of all marine species are actually mollusks. So that's, that's a significant portion, almost a quarter. Um, the word mollusca for mollusk it means soft body. Um, and the reason for that is because the first mollusks that were observed were cuttlefish. And those are relatives of squid. And we'll see pictures of those in a second. And also a really cool gif of one. Um, but what you'll see is that um, mollusks have a diverse set of body forms and some of them have hard shells. So the word um, soft body doesn't really describe all mollusks, um, but it does describe some of them. And uh, under, by the way, underneath that shell is a soft body. So <laughs> um, I think it's, it's fine, it'll work. Um, let's talk about some key characteristics, body characteristics for that matter of mollusks. So um, they're gonna have a ventral muscular foot that's typically used for locomotion. By the way, the word ventral uh, refers to the underside or the bottom of the organism. They'll have something called a visceral mass and the visceral mass just contains their internal organs. It's sort of like the, the, the mass, the body of the, the organism, and it contains their internal organs. Then they're gonna have something called a dorsal mantle, and that's a flap of tissue that covers the visceral mass, and it creates a space called the mantle cavity. Now the dorsal mantle, dorsal means on the top or the back. And so um, when you think of that, think dorsal fin is on the back, the top of the back of sharks and, and all sorts of other um, thing, you know, water creatures that you can think of that have a dorsal fin. The mantle may or may not, like I said, secrete a shell. Um, and that shell is made of calcium carbonate. It's this hard material. And many mollusks have a scraping mouth structure and that's called a radula, okay? So there's just some bolded terms that I would want you to know. Um, let's talk about more characteristics. Characteristics. The foot varies between species. Think about an octopus, what their, their feet might look like versus the snail, what it looks like. Um, it's a retractable and extendable organ. Um, they are ucelomates, if you remember, ucelome. That means they have a body cavity. They have a true coelome. Their coelome, however, only encases their heart because um, the mantle cavity, the visceral mass, houses uh, many of the other organs, including the gills, um, organs for sensing food particles in water, things like that. They have an open circulatory system, except for octopuses and squid, which have closed circulatory systems like us. But remember, open circulatory systems means that their organs are just sort of bathed in blood. Let's talk about the diversity of mollusks because it's very, very, uh, they are very, very diverse. There are seven classes, so I'll give you the names of them quick and then we'll look at examples. Aplacophora, monoplacophora, polyplacophora, bivalvia, gastropoda, cephalopoda, scaphopoda, and let's get into the aplacophora. So aplacophora means bearing no plates. They are worm-like animals that live deep, deep down in the ocean. They lack a shell because they're aplacophora, they have no plates. But what they do have, if you can kind of see them in this organism right here, are these aragonite spicules. And um, what aragonite is, it's a type of crystal material. So they are actually, would be very sharp to the touch. Um, they're, they have crystal structures in their skin. So it's pretty, pretty uh, badass, I'd say. Um, but then we'll get into the monoplacophora. So if aplacophora meant no plates, monoplacophora means one plate. And they uh, have a single cap-like shell that encloses the body. And we once uh, thought that these guys were extinct until scientists uh, a few years later discovered um, two dozen living species. So that's monoplacophora. Here's polyplacophora. These guys are really, really cool looking. Um, if mono meant one plate, poly means bearing many plates. These guys are commonly known as chitons, 
and they bear um, armor like eight plated shells. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight plates. Um, really, really cool looking. Look at the color on that guy. Really cool. And they have this broad, on the underside, they would have a broad ventral foot and they attach themselves to rocks and move around a little bit. They also do have a radula, a little mouth piece that helps them scrape stuff off of rocks to eat. And their mantle actually extends past the shell. So you can actually see it here. This is their shell. And here's the dorsal mantle and it extends past. You can see how it's like a little bit different. It's a little wet, um, a little shinier, I guess, compared to the shell. It extends past the shell and that's called the girdle. Okay. So now we've done aplacophora, monoplacophora, polyplacophora. Let's get into the bivalvia. Um, bivalvia means two shells. It includes your clams, your oysters, your mussels, your scallop shells. Here they are. And something called geoducts. And in, what you have is an organism that's enclosed in a pair of shells. And the shells are hinged at the dorsal side. Here's dorsal for the bottom. And ventral would be the top. Um, and they feed by opening up these shells and they filter particles from water. And since they have to filter stuff, they don't have a radula, so they don't scrape things off of rocks. So they, these guys do not have a radula. Um, some bivalves, like oysters and mussels, have a unique ability to secrete and deposit a calcareous uh, material called nacre. And this is also called colloquial, mo colloquially mother of pearl. Let's take a look at that um, on the next slide. And people can use this and exploit them commercially to make pearls. So here are pearls. We're pretty aware of what those are, but maybe you didn't know that they come from um, a living organism. And here is knacker or mother of pearl. And in my opinion, uh, getting a shell with the mother of pearl still attached, uh, it's just absolutely beautiful. Um, I, I wouldn't sneeze at pearls either, but for some reason, this just uh, does it for me uh, better than, than pearls do. Um, but you can find, you'll find um, mother of pearl knacker shells just lying on the beach if you are able to walk on the beach somewhere. Um, but very, very beautiful looking. Okay, now let's talk about gastropods. Gastro, uh, if you've ever heard the term gastrointestinal, uh, gastropods, podia or poda, podia, means foot. So put those together, you get stomach foot. Uh, these are the snails, the slugs, the conch shells, um, the sea hares, and the sea butterflies. Gastropods, in, uh, gastropods include shell-bearing species as well as species that have a reduced shell, like slugs. Um, these animals are asymmetrical, right? And what that means is you can't produce any cut two halves that are identical, uh, and they usually present a coiled shell. The visceral mass is then twisted within that coiled shell. Um, and the foot is often modified for crawling so that they use their foot to crawl along. And the radula is there. It's used for scraping. Here are some uh, examples. Here is the uh, sea butterfly. And this I think this is the sea hare. This is a conch shell. Here's a slug. My poor snail got cut off. Um, I think this is like a, a, a sea slug. Um, but yeah, you can see they're very, very diverse gastropods, um, but really cool creatures. So if I, if I could show you the shell, if we opened it up, what you would see is on the inside, this is twisted just like um, you see on the inside, but there's all these little, um, I guess you would call them little compartments inside. And so I'll show you that uh, when we do our lab on animals. I'll show you pictures and stuff. So it's really, really cool looking, um, but let's move on. Um, most gastropods are going to bear a head with tentacles that support eyes, and you would find that, and if, if this guy wasn't cut off, uh, you would see that as well. Uh, okay, the cephalopods. So if you, have, uh, if you have any Latin, you would know that cephalo means head and podia means foot. So these guys are head foot. Um, this is your octopuses, squids, cuttlefish, and the nautilus. Um, cephalopods are going to have shelled and reduced shelled groups. They're vividly colored. They can do a lot of cool things, changing the, the um, pigment of their skin and use it as camouflage. Really, really cool. Tons of videos uh, I could show you. Um, and I got a GIF at the end here that I can show you. These guys are really supreme predators. They have beak-like jaws. 
and they this is really important they have well developed nervous systems with complex eyes and a closed circulatory system they're incredibly smart organisms um, I, one example I can give you is I used to uh, take care of a small octopus at a um, marine extension aquarium for University of Georgia and uh, one time I was feeding the octopus and I had to go do something so I put the food cup on the outside of his cage and I forgot to lock down the top and I walked away and when I came back his food cup was in the tank and he was eating it all up um, because he knew like they're aware of an outside of the tank um, and so really just really really interesting organisms um, but yeah uh, before I take any too much more of your time let's keep moving um, in cephalopods, their foot is lobed and it's developed into tentacles and a funnel. And that funnel is used for locomotion. They spit water out of it and they can move like a jet, basically. There are suckers that are present on the tentacles of octopus and squid. And like I said, they move quickly through jet propulsion. They suck in water and they spit it out and they can move through jet propulsion. The nautilus has external shells. So that's the cephalopods with external shells. I'll show you a picture of that here in a second. They have separate sexes, and some females actually take care of their eggs for a long time. So um, you don't see that in all organisms, but some cephalopods do. Here's the nautilus, and here's that the compartments of that shell. So you can see it's the visceral mass then goes into the shell. Uh, but this is what the uh, nautilus looks like. Really just awesome, awesome organism. Really um, have been around for a long time. And they, what they do is they suck in water and they spit it out and they go flying this way. Um, so that's the Nautilus. Here's an octopus, and this is one of my favorite octopi. Um, this is a blue-ringed octopus. They're extremely venomous. Um, not, not really too much of a danger to you. They're kind of minding their own business, but I wouldn't want to step on one. Um, and here, here's an octopus attached to somebody's arm. And there's videos of people who come back to the same place and the octopus seems to remember them and they feed them, and it's just, they're really, really cool organisms. Squids, uh, including the giant squid that lives very deep down and has uh, actual battles with whales and stuff, that would freak me out. Look at the size of that eye and this little cute guy that they saw way deep down in the ocean. Um, there is the, uh, the, the radula, and so it's very, very interesting, uh, these organisms. Um, here's the cuttlefish that I was talking about. These guys do tons of cool changing color things um, and they are able to some communicate with through their tentacles moving and also um, they use their tentacles to uh, distract prey. Here's what that looks like. So this is not an artifact of the video when he starts flashing like that. That is what he is making himself do. Um, and notice that he's changing color, he's changing texture, and he's flashing all these colors. And so they do that in order to um, basically stun prey, and then they're all freaked out by what's happening, and then they just get eaten. Um, and there's really, really interesting uh, individual organisms here, and one of my favorites, that's for sure. Okay, and then here's the scaphopoda. don't have great pictures of these guys because they are benthic organisms, so whenever we find them, they're usually dead. Benthic means they live all the way down at the bottom of the ocean in the ocean floor. These guys are boat feet, scaphopoda, and they're known as tusk shells or boat shells and sometimes tooth shells, and they're open at both ends. They've got a radula as well as tentacles that helps catch prey, and there's not too much to say about those guys. Um, let's get into annelids. So there were the mollusks. Now let's get into the annelids. Annelids are segmented worms. You find them in marine, terrestrial, and freshwater environments. So you find them pretty much everywhere. The presence of water, however, is critical to their survival. They can't deal with dryness. You've seen this if you've ever seen earthworms that come out maybe in the middle of the night when there's some water on the uh, concrete in the middle of the day, they're all dead because they are not going to survive in an area that's not wet. We're talking about earthworms, polychaete worms, and leeches. Their skin is protected by a cuticle, but it does not need to be molted. Remember that crab that was molting its cuticle? These uh, guys, their cuticle does not need to be molted. 
They have these small like hair-like structures called chitae. So we talked about polychaete worms. That means mini chitae. We'll get into that in a second. Annelids have true coelom, have a true coelom, uh, which means that they have a true body cavity, and within that body cavity are their organs. They have a complete digestive system. If you remember what that means, that means they have a mouth and another uh, hole that is the anus or just gets rid of their digestive waste. They have a closed circulatory system with pumping what I'll call hearts. Um, not really a heart, but they have structures that pump the blood through vessels, so that's not an open circulatory system, it's closed. And they actually have well-developed nervous system. Here's annelids, the oligochaetes. Um, they are, earthworms are one example of an abundant oligochaete. They are characterized by a raised band of reproductive organs called the clitellum. Here's the clitellum. That's what that band on the worm looks like. That's their reproductive organs. They are members of the oligochaetae or oligochaetes. Oligo means few, chitae means hairs. They don't have the chitae's, which are the hairs. Um, and yeah, and this they don't, that's basically what that says. They are diminished in this class. Okay, now here are the polychaetes. Poly means many and chitae means hairs, so they have many hairs. The chitae of the polychaetes are also arranged within fleshy, flat, paired appendages on each segment called parapodia. There they are, the parapodia. Okay, and then how about the Herudinoidea? And those, this subclass includes leeches, and that is a parasite, an ectoparasite that's sucking the blood of that individual. Um, there are significant differences between leeches and other annelids, including the development of suckers, ugh, disgusting, at the anterior and posterior ends, and of course the absence of chitae. There's no hairs on this organism. And with that, guys, I will call it there. Let me know if you have any questions about the mollusks and the annelids, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye.